So what is androgenetic alopecia and what can you do about it? Well, let's talk about it. So what is androgenetic alopecia? Well, if you break down the term, it actually explains exactly what it is. So androgen or andro, genetic, and alopecia for hair loss. So it's androgen genetically related hair loss. So androgens are a set of hormones, in this particular case, DHT is the culprit or dihydrotestosterone, that obviously play a lot of roles in your body, but in this case, if you have a DHT sensitivity that's genetically programmed into your hair, then at some point, your DHT is going to impact the hair on your scalp and it will begin to fall out slow and gradual over time. This can impact both men and women. It can start as early as 18 for men. Oftentimes, it won't start until in the mid 30s for women, depending on their hormones or it could start as late as in your 50s, 60s, or 70s. It's really all about genetics, lifestyle factors, and exactly how your hormonal balance is occurring within your body. So collectively, if you're dealing with androgenetic alopecia, there's a couple things that really stand out about this type of hair loss that will allow you to identify it. So one, androgenetic alopecia only occurs on the top of the scalp. So it will only be happening on the top of the head. Because of that, when you're looking in the mirror, if you've got uniformed hair loss throughout your entire head, it's not androgenetic alopecia. If you have more hair loss on the top of your head than on the sides of the scalp, then it probably is related to DHT because there's other types of hair loss that might actually be impacting the sides of the scalp. So when you're looking at that, again, DHT or androgenetic hair loss only happens on the top of the head. So typically it's in a pattern, so obviously you're going to see some loss typically at the front and then the back and then it will meet in the middle, or women will actually lose hair in the middle, just a spot behind that frontal hairline and it will spread out oftentimes in a Christmas tree pattern. But again, it's really dependent upon your genetic pattern. Also, there has to be a family history. So if there's no one else in your family that's lost hair, then realistically it is unlikely that you're dealing with DHT related loss. Now, some people don't know their family, they may be adopted or maybe some of the older people in their family had passed on early, so they don't have that connection to their genetic history. So that may be a little bit more of a challenge, but ultimately, if you're losing hair in a pattern, then it is most likely DHT related loss if it's only on the top of the head. Some of the other attributes of uh, DHT or androgenetic hair loss, you'll notice that there's oftentimes more oil in the areas of hair loss. So like in the temples, frontal hairline, maybe through the midsection of the scalp or in the crown, increased oil is your body basically trying to push out the excessive amount of DHT binding to the hair follicle because it knows it's bad and creating inflammation and it's trying to flush it out. Another item that is a really a key factor for androgenetic alopecia is the fact that it's slow and gradual over time. So if you had nine months ago a full head of hair and you've lost 50% of your hair in the last nine months, it is unlikely that it is exclusively DHT related or DHT related at all because it takes time for those hairs to fall out and grow back smaller and finer and do this cyclically for many, many years to actually create a level of miniaturization that's noticeable. Now, you may have a powerful genetic history, so it happens a little bit faster in a couple years, but it's not gonna happen in months. Now that you can identify whether you have DHT-related loss or not, how do you fix it? So there are two paths, actually. So there's a pharmaceutical path, and then there is a natural path. Now, I usually always recommend the natural path unless something else is going on, a very strong genetic predisposition, like maybe you're very young when you started losing hair, or ultimately that you've extinguished some of these other options. But first, I'm gonna talk about the natural path. So in my opinion, when you're dealing with DHT-related hair loss naturally, you have to come at it both internally and externally. Because although natural methods are a little bit less powerful, they have less side effects. They need a little bit more to cover the entire area. Ultimately for internal, I recommend the Advanced Trichology DHT Blocker with Immune Support, 
which is two in the morning, two at night with food. So it uses a combination of saw palmetto, stinging nettle, pygeum, as well as also probiotics, prebiotics, and a natural antifungal to help increase digestion and decrease inflammation. And that is gonna reduce about 35% of the impact of the DHT on the hair follicle receptor. Now that's good, but it's definitely not the whole picture. So that is why I also recommend the Advanced Trichology Nutra-M Topical Scalp Serum, which is a melatonin-based topical, which has a lot of clinical evidence that it's blocking androgenetic alopecia uh, in some of the studies that are coming out of Asia as well as in Europe. So you can use that twice a day, apply it directly to the areas of loss, uh, you can then after 90 days reduce it down to once a day and it leaves no residue whatsoever, massage it in and it actually again is completely natural and helps eliminate the DHT topically. So collectively those two do a phenomenal job at decreasing the DHT burden almost completely. The average person it will knock it out and I then say you don't have to deal with DHT anymore because it's mitigated from those two products. Now there's a pharmaceutical path. Now that pharmaceutical path is uh, twofold. One, finasteride is a pharmaceutical that is also known as Propecia, and that is something that has been used to block the overall impact of DHT systemically. Problem is, oftentimes it comes along with side effects, and that is something that needs to be considered. Now it's also coming into a topical form nowadays that you're gonna see quite a bit on the internet. Um, but that is a path. Now it's gonna block usually between 55 and 65% of the free DHT, and that might be a good solution for you. However, for men, again, it does come with risks, decreased ejaculate, decreased capability of maintaining an erection or decreased libido. For women, it doesn't really have a lot of side effects unless you're of childbearing age, and it could have a very negative impact on a male child if you're taking that while you have a baby in utero but ultimately it's not as effective for women. So usually you're seeing some research now that postmenopausal females can get away with about five milligrams of finasteride and it may decrease the overall DHT impact, whereas men typically it's one milligram of finasteride. So that's one path uh, pharmaceutically. Another path, which is exclusively for women, is using a pharmaceutical called spirolactone, otherwise known as aldactone. Spirolactone, is a uh, anti-androgen. Essentially, it is also a diuretic, but when you are consuming it, the average dose is usually 25 to 50 milligrams twice daily. It is going to reduce the overall amount of testosterone in your body, ultimately reducing the amount of DHT in your body. So that is a path that sometimes really helps women, but again, it has side effects. So, I mean, if it's a diuretic, you're gonna be actually excreting quite a bit of water, can then lead to dehydration and other side effects. But these are something that you have to consider is, you know, is the pharmaceutical path or the natural path better? Again, I lean towards the natural always at the beginning. Additionally, you may use the natural and it might not work for you completely, so you have to then do a little bit of the pharmaceutical as well, as well as DHT is just one reason for hair loss. There's two other reasons for hair loss. They are nutritional and inflammatory. So you have to take into consideration what reason for hair loss is impacting you, because most people have more than one reason. So they might have DHT and nutrition, or they might have DHT and inflammation, or they might have all three. So you have to be cognizant of treating all three. If you wanna know for yourself what reasons for hair loss you're most likely dealing with, you can take the quiz on the Advanced Trichology website. There's a link in the description below to do that. And that will identify usually uh, with 14 questions exactly what reason you're dealing with or multiple reasons. So I hope that helps. I really hope that gave you insight into what DHT blockers are, how it plays into androgenetic alopecia and what treatments you should utilize. If you do this successfully, normally you're gonna go back in time about a year with the DHT blockers alone, or you can theoretically add growth stimulants like low-level laser therapy or minoxidil, and that will actually allow you to go back in time even further as far as hair regrowth, usually in about 18 months. You'll go back in time between three and five years if you're adding those additional growth stimulants. So please, I hope that this helped. Again, we are happy to help in any way. I personally hope that this really gave you value. If it did, please go ahead and hit that like button. Subscribe also to this channel for more information like this and know that I'm happy to help with your hair loss situation in any way.